This week we saw one of the largest stock market drops in recent years, which brings many to wonder, what might this mean for the real estate market? Is it now better to buy or rent? Well, here to talk about the dip and the effect on real estate is Darius Solomon, associate broker at Prudential Douglas Element. Darius, good to see you. Always a pleasure. It did raise the question in many investors' minds, perhaps those who are less you know, involved in the market, they just start thinking, how is this going to affect everything I have? Uh, what does it mean when you stood out, when you heard about it as a broker? Well, the first, the first reaction on anybody seeing a sudden change in the market is, oh my God, what's happening? Right. Is this going to affect other markets? Is this going to change the real estate market now right. that I'm looking? The simplest way to put it is really still a matter of business as usual. And the important point is that regardless of there being dips and troughs as there have been in the past in the financial markets, is to look at the long-term trend of the stock market and even the real estate market. Yeah, you've got a graphic to kind of illustrate this for us, Darius, and talk us through it about how the market's performed and how the, the housing, uh, how the Right, and, and this is not reflective. There were many dips, dips in along between the along the way, but right. if you typically look at the past five years and the Dow, we saw over those five years an increase of about 15 percent, and the okay. NASDAQ, uh, we saw a little bit more, about 33 percent. Now, that same person potentially investing in some real estate at that point within that time frame would have seen up to about 53 percent increase on their investment. Now, this is not to say just jump out and start investing in real estate versus right. stocks, but yeah. it's just showing a trend that we've seen both ups and downs in both of these markets, and over time, especially as we've spoken in the past, yeah. if you're looking at a long-term purchase, there's definitely an opportunity there in safety, in a sense, for investment. Yeah, that's what you've reinforced, is that, look, at least a four- to five-year investment. I, I always say that. All right. Where do things stand now with the market, giving this backdrop of this past week? Well, we saw, we saw trends from the fourth quarter where we actually now finally saw we saw inventory mm -hmm. overages in the fourth quarter from now from then till now we've seen actually about an eighteen percent decrease in the inventory uh... it now has shifted somewhat again from what we call the buyers, buyers market, market to somewhere in the middle okay. it's neither a buyers nor a sellers market um, inventory is a little bit lower but interest rema rates remain low so people are out and looking and what i've been telling you know especially when people are looking out there uh, a well-priced property will sell quickly. A, a property that's overpriced will sit around for a long time. Right. The buyer out there right now needs to look at, the, uh, let's say they find something that they really like, uh -huh. and consider how much they're going to negotiate, uh -huh. uh, especially if it's priced well. Okay, all right. And we've been hearing in the headlines, at least lately, how much rents have gone up uh, because people were skittish about buying. So now, does it change the dynamic of buying versus renting? Well, this has always been the big question. Do I buy or do I rent? And it still hinges back down on how long will you be renting. Yeah. Uh, the most important is to look at the numbers and how that will affect you. And, and here's we some put here, some yeah. numbers over here. And looking at a one-bedroom average rental at about $3,100, yeah. that'll cost you about $37,200 uh, for year. the year. Okay. Now, there's no applicable tax benefit that you right. get. Now, right. taking account if you're financially capable of purchasing, and that's a little bit more discussion there, a one-bedroom co-op, and we're using averages of $609,000 average fourth quarter price for right. a one-bedroom co-op. It'll, out of your pocket, cost you about $4,000 a month, and at the end of the year, about forty-eight. But when you do take your tax benefits into account, you're talking about $33,000 versus thirty-seven when it's coming to renting. Uh -huh. um, and then finally, if we look at the condos, there's a little bit of a difference there. The average condo at about $800,000 will cost you about $5,500 for, for the month, out of pocket right. again. <clears throat> 66,000 for the year at a net at the end of the year you're talking about 45,000 right. but there's less restrictions with the condominium so it makes it a little bit easier for some to purchase and what Darius is expected with interest rates at least from what you're hearing well as from what we've heard is that the, there's been there hasn't been specific pressure to increase or definitely not to decrease at this point right but looking forward that potentially the economy becomes stronger in the middle of 2007 it hasn't put pressure for them to suddenly increase the rate so it's sort of the status quo I foresee it moving fairly slowly forward. Okay. Darius Solomon, painting the picture for us as always. Thank you. Thank you. And